on mine.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for today's lessons.
Hearing aids and masks don't always work together. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a vine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove the hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is, house, is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are as pleasant plantings. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 80, verses 1 and 2, verse 8 through 18. Hero, shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Mansiah, stir up your strength and come to help us. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its trindles to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend his vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Second reading, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29, verses 12, 12, chapter 12, verses two. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put forth armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release. In order to obtain a better resurrection, others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would, not apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let also lay aside every weight and the sin is linked so closely. Let us run with a perseverance the race 
that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of, of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of sky, of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, Father Matt asked if I'd like to preach this morning, and I said, sure, glad to. Then I read the readings. <laughs> <laughs> Then I remembered, oh yeah, Jason Myers was going to be with us today, but now not till November. Maybe I could just call Jason and get some, some tips. Well, that wasn't such a grand idea. And so finally, I had to just sit with the readings and struggle with them. Because what struck me first was the apparent harshness an apparently angry God who's going to punish 
and destroy everything made. And why is that? Because humankind has abused and rejected the gift of creation, the gift of one another, and the gift of God's fierce and limitless love. Well, if God's love is fierce and limited, where was it in these readings? So I kept searching for that God who so deeply loves and cares for us. And in a moment of honest desperation, I thought of St. Julian of Norwich because I yearned to hear her assurance that God is love, that God is a friend, is mother, is father. And I wanted to hear her assurance that, God, that everything is in God and that God is in everything and transcending and enclosing all that's made. Well, I think the Holy Spirit was working a little over time, whispering that love really is in these very readings, these same readings that caused me such a struggle, and that I just needed to open my mind and my heart to understand. So, okay. I began to sit with them, and it occurred to me to wonder if we've perhaps misunderstood God's apparent rage. And I came to suspect that we have. In Luke's gospel, Jesus declares that he's come to bring not peace to the earth, but fire and division. Again, the words are startling and unnerving. Who is this Jesus? He's not the one we hear about, apparently. But are the words really what they seem to be? As I read again and reflected more, I came to see the fire and division as that phenomenon in literature and Jungian thought known as the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire is basically an alchemical process in which the gold is refined and all the dross burned away until you have the pure metal sitting there intact, leaving it trend. And I think that it's this kind of transformation that Jesus is asking of us, that we burn away all that's not us, all that's not authentic, and become fully and authentically who we are, who we're made to be, who God calls us to be. There's nothing easy about that kind of uh, personal transformation, nothing at all. It requires a level of honesty with self which makes each one of us squirm and seek an easier way. And the reflection sure made me squirm <laughs> a lot. The secret of becoming authentically who we're made to be is that it allows us to see one another with eyes of love. It opens the ears of our hearts to the other. It leaves us away, leads us away from judgment and draws us to respect each person we see not easy, not easy at all in a world as we currently find it. So with all of this in mind, the fog began to clear, and Isaiah's love song to the beloved, before he goes into the darker words, gives a clue to God's fierce love for us and for all of creation. We've been given a priceless gift in one another, and in the created world. And yet, as Isaiah says, God expecting justice saw bloodshed. 
These days we do see bloodshed. We live in a world beset by division and suspicion. School children are shot. People are shot in grocery stores, synagogues, mosques, and in Fourth of July parades. The earth is suffering from a terrible heat and lack of rain. Animals go hungry for lack of hay and good grass. Too many families can't feed their children. Frustrations and tempers blare, and so what do we do? We blame each other. What else to do? We call for solutions, and yet do little to make the changes needed to restore the earth and society to be again that precious gift God has given so freely. God's fierce love calls us again and again to love one another, to love God, to deliver each of us from the self-deception that locates evil always in the other, never in me, and blinds us to our own fault. That fierce love calls, calls us to wonder and awe at the joy, the beauty of creation, the beauty of the pale green leaves after the tr as the trees wake from the winter's sleep. The purple flower hidden, hidden in the grasses of the field calls us to rejoice at all of these things, to walk hand in hand with a small child, to see and honor another's pain, and to stay with them. Something that's maybe easy and impossibly hard, all at the same time and all mixed up together. We at Calvary say we are a place to call home, and we are. No two of us are quite alike. No two of us really agree with each other in every matter, and still, we love each other. We work together. We support each other. We're there for each other in the good times and the bad. Love will show us the way to grow our community, to move out into our larger community, to serve, to listen, to heal. We're called to yet another holy experiment, to love self as the gift we are, to love the other as God's given gift. We are called to share our love with that larger community and we're called to bring hope. As scripture says, love is the greatest of these. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the God of love and hope through the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, in the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the bondhead and the life of the Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, may be found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope to, in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that, you will, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our refuge and strength, our help in times of trouble. Have mercy on the lands in Bastrop County damaged by fires, especially the Pine Pond Fire. Have mercy on the lands where the weather has destroyed livelihoods. Protect those who battle these blazes and strengthen those who rebuild hope so that our community may face your good future without fear. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church. No matter where you are on your journey of faith, we are a place to call home. If you are a guest with us today, we're especially glad that you have joined us. When you're ready to connect and learn more, we invite you to take the Connect card from the pew back in front of you, share as much information as you would like to, and drop it in the offering plate as it comes by in just a moment. For those of you that are joining us online, uh, we have an online connect card. You can click the link in Facebook or YouTube and it'll do the same thing. Either way, it gives us a chance to reach out to you, find out a bit about your journey and answer any questions you have about our ministry here at the intersection of downtown and the river. I'm very pleased to announce that our audio system is fully installed and we still have a little training on the way, but it's, uh, uh, we feel really good about it. The live stream is working for which we're very grateful. Uh, we do invite your feedback. <laughs> See the pun there? Feedback. <laughs> I'm basically an audio engineer now, so uh, <clears throat> we'd love to get your feedback on the levels and the blend, especially the contemporary ensemble, you know, if things are, how you're receiving things uh, so we can make adjustments. Uh, next up, for many years, our own Donna Armstrong has sent handwritten uh, birthday and anniversary cards to parishioners, and she is stepping back from that ministry. Uh, due to some health reasons, and so we decided, what do you get to somebody who's written cards to thank them? We send them a whole bunch of cards. Uh, so we're going to pass these around, and if you haven't gotten a chance to fill, uh, fill one out, please do, uh, and we will send these uh, to Donna. Here, can I give those to you, and you can kind of move those in the back. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and that will be great. Please continue to pray for Richard and Donna in your prayers. Uh, so right after this service, we have a reception for Bo Kemp, our new communications and operations manager. Bo is here with us today in worship. Bo, stand up so everybody can see you. Let me give him a warm Calvary welcome. <clears throat> you get to meet and talk with Bo and hear from him at the reception. We're also going to have some special refreshments. So here's the deal. Okay, so Heather, Heather and Holly were in charge of the, ha of the, the happy hour. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> it will be happy. She's in charge. They were in charge of the coffee hour, and so I asked them to do a little something special for Bo, and uh, we have at our house a, a chocolate fountain. And Heather was like, let's do a chocolate fountain. 
And all week long, I wanted to say to you all, there's going to be a chocolate fountain. And Heather was like, don't tell them, because what if it doesn't work? And then they'll be upset. But I just can't keep secrets very well. Other than confession, I keep those secrets very well. Very important. Anyway, so there, there is rumor of, of chocolate fountain and fruit kebabs and just a lovely spread. So come and join us to celebrate Bo and get to meet him right after this. While you're in the parish hall, as you walk past that glass wall, let's check our information uh, for the church directory. All that's hung up so we can update that information. Uh, and also, if you'd like a t-shirt, Eric Ranka will be selling t-shirts, Calvary t-shirts today in the parish hall as well for reasons I'll talk about in a moment. Dr. West is hosting a music ministry open house this coming Wednesday night. Uh, the Contemporary Ensemble rehearsal starts at 545. There'll be kind of the open house and refreshments at 630. And the choir rehearses at 7. So come and learn more about our music ministries and how you could share your gifts. Finally, our fall kickoff is next Sunday, one week from today. Just like seven sleeps, I think is what the kids say. Try not to lose too much sleep. So we're going to find out our superpowers. That means, so in one way we're going to celebrate, you can wear your Calvary t-shirt, or if you have a, a favorite superhero t-shirt, wear that, because we're going to do kind of a superhero theme for a couple weeks. The first 14 kids who get here for the 10 o'clock service will get a cape to wear and be part of our special superhero procession. It's going to be good. We will uh, bless students, teachers, and backpacks. We will bless the Joyce Fritz Memorial Sound System. We will have an ice cream social 11, and then we will reveal the adult formation theme for the first part of the fall and have open houses in the nursery, godly play, story makers, and youth group. You'll get more information about the layout of the day, but please, uh, it's been a wonderful summer. It's been a lot of travel, and it's been good for us all to get those adventures, and now it's, uh, we're back to school, back to church, and back into the fall rhythm, and we have lots to celebrate and look forward to. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Yeah. 
lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering, we are an Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. After our reception in the parish hall, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.